Hello and welcome back if you've uh, been following this series. So this is the fifth and final part for now in a series on controlling model trains using Raspberry Pi, Arduino or other microcontroller. If you haven't seen them yet, then the previous parts, part one covers um, power supplies, looking at AC to DC conversion. Part two looks at DC motor control, uh, which is just applicable to other DC motors such as robots and uses a H bridge to change the polarity and hence change the direction of the motor. Part three looks at PWM, pulse width modulation, at how you can vary the speed of a motor by sending a digital signal and switching it on and off appropriately, which is just, again, just as applicable for robots as it is for model trains. And the last episode was number four, which was on using automation. So it used the read switch to detect the presence of the train and change the flow of the train. So it automatically stopped at the station and started and drove around until I came around to the station again. And in this one, I'm going to look at how we can control it using the internet. IOT often stands for Internet of Things, in this case, Internet of Trains. Basically, I've, I've got some Python code. It's all linked to it in the description. And what this does, this creates a sort of a mini web server that runs under Python code. And it's a, a library called Bottle, which is very easy to import. And once you've imported that, then you look for signals. You have to create a little bit of HTML just to give you a web page. And whenever you communicate with that web page, then it can change the train speed accordingly. Uh, this will work on your home LAN. Um, so if you connect via the same Wi-Fi LAN, then you'll be able to connect to the train. Um, it won't work on the internet until or unless you forward that port across your router. Um, normally port 80 and you can uh, port forward port 80 to the um, Raspberry Pi. Uh, unfortunately you have to look at the instructions from your router because various different routers all act differently. Usually a, a quick search on the internet should provide that for you. You'll also need to know your IP address. One of the best ways to do this is to use something like dynamic DNS and there's a link in the description as well as to how you can get to that. So in the end we've got a train that you can control either automatically as in the, the previous part or that you can take manual control using a laptop or your mobile phone or, or whatever you want. So I hope you've found this series useful. If you have then please like and share it and if you'd like to find out more about other activities I'm doing I mainly concentrate on maker activities be they Raspberry Pi, Arduino or 3D printing and various things like that so if you subscribe to my channel um, and you'll find out more about the activities I do in the future in the meanwhile time I hope you found this series useful and uh, goodbye for now